Welcome back to another episode on coffee and content. So this is the first time I am streaming this on YouTube. I'm so excited because if you don't know, if you're watching this on YouTube, I have a podcast now called Coffee and Content Podcast. And I'm excited to share this because there will be times where I'm going to put some episodes on YouTube just to kind of talk about certain things, but there won't be every single episode. So if you're interested, I will leave some links down below so that way you're able to then get tuned in and see other marketing strategies over coffee it's tradition to take our cup of coffee um have a sip and let's just talk about how to market like a billionaire oh so good all right so let's discuss how to market like a billionaire now some of you might be like well justine did you ever market like a billionaire and do you know billionaires no but we both know a billionaire (laughs) Because <laughs> we could just watch them on Google or YouTube or any of the performances. Maybe you're not a football fan. However, I think her name has taken over a lot of trends on Google, on social media, to discuss Rihanna's halftime performance at the Super Bowl this past Sunday. How can we discuss their marketing plans? Well, Rihanna's team, her Fenty team specifically, did a phenomenal job with the marketing. I was taken back by the things that were brewing up behind the scenes, get it? Brewing up like coffee. (laughs) And I wanted to share those marketing strategies because I think some of them can be incorporated into your business. And why not get the best marketing strategies from a billionaire themselves. Rihanna has been out of the game for a couple of years now. I think about between six or seven years. We haven't really seen her perform. She came up with a beauty line called Fenty Beauty. And then she even had a baby recently with ASAP Rocky, the rapper. When we did hear news about her, Rihanna actually put on her Instagram that she was going to be the next halftime show at this 2023 Super Bowl performance. So a lot of people knew and actually a lot of people on TikTok specifically that I saw were wondering what song she was going to start off with, what she was going to perform with. She has so many really great songs. So the discussion happened before the performance, which is key when it comes to marketing. This performance was her debut after not singing or performing for years. And to get in front of people worldwide, and I'm not just talking it's an American sport, I think a lot lot of countries all over the world watch our football game and are able to understand that you know the halftime show is a pretty big deal all performers and all artists whoever shows up on the halftime show know that this is probably the most watched television or media in any time frame so it's a pretty big deal now I have been reading about the law of compensation and the law of compensation comes from the book called the go-giver or the go-giver sells more and that law law says the number of people you impact dictates the amount of money you make so if we just understand the behavior of a billionaire billionaires have to impact the world they have to impact the world in order to make money in order to be a billionaire and when we understand that the law of impact whether you like them or not i want that to be very clear some people do not like the billionaires of our world and that is fine you know you can have your own opinion i'm out here just trying to sip coffee give you guys facts <laughs> but if you wanted to even step into millions or six figure seven figure eight figure nine figure whatever the figure is for you in your business you have to impact more people So if we think about the amount of people who are in your world and who you're impacting, if it's not big enough, it'll be very hard to become that billionaire. And it doesn't mean that you have to be like performing like a R&B artist or you have to be a rapper or a singer or an influencer. You just have to influence the world and make an impact. So that is the first thing about marketing is to understand How do we get in front of a lot of people when it comes down to our business? And we're going to look at Rihanna as a business owner. Granted, she got in front of thousands and millions and billions of people over the time frame she's been out as an artist. But that doesn't guarantee people to become billionaires, right? So once we understand that, I think her makeup was the reason why she became a billionaire. She was able to impact the world. And when you're able to impact the world, you get compensated as such 
because you are now in front of everybody's mind. Everybody's talking about your brand and you don't even have to show up. That's the difference between a billionaire and a millionaire. A person doesn't, or even a millionaire, right? Multi-millions. But if their business makes an impact for millions of people, that all that money is supposed to be compensated according to the law of compensation. Okay, so let's discuss Rihanna and her marketing plan. So she decided to perform at the Super Bowl and we all know she's going to get in front of millions of people. Every single artist knows that when they step on that stage for a few minutes, their sales go extremely high. It's almost an adverse effect immediately. We're going to take a look at Rihanna's decision when it came down to her decision to perform at the halftime because it's very different and unique versus what we've seen before. The first thing I want to talk about is how she invited a lot of, and when I say she, I know she has a marketing team, right? And there are people who are doing her business for her. So when you get to that level, right, all you have to do is say yes or no, what you agree to be true. But when I say she, please know I'm talking about her marketing team and the team who supports her to get her in front of a lot of people. So prior to the Super Bowl, I'm on social media. You guys know this. I love TikTok. I don't recommend if you can't control the amount of time you're putting on there. <laughs> but she ended up inviting makeup um, or social media influencers to a Fenty event and invited these influencers to the Super Bowl to watch the halftime show. I almost can guarantee, I mean, there's no guarantees in life, but I almost can share that she probably didn't ask for nothing in return from those people. And I will explain this as you continue to listen because what she did was phenomenal. Such a great marketing tactic. Influencers influence. <laughs> that is their job. That is what they do. So if they're an influencer and they're being invited to one of the biggest events of our entire country, they're going to share that experience. And if you know anything about marketing, and if you don't, that's why you're following me. <laughs> Providing an experience for anybody can literally be the game changer for your business. There were probably some guidance or something like that, but I almost say no because I think most of the times when you put an influencer at an event, more than likely they will create content to support it. Maybe they say if you can just share maybe five different types of content showcasing your experience with Fenty we will invite you here. That's a good deal, right? To get something like that and invite it to, I would do it. <laughs> you wouldn't even have to pay me nothing. So there was one particular makeup influencer that I watched and I love her page because her marketing strategy, I mean, people have their own opinions about her, but her marketing strategy is phenomenal. So there's a woman on TikTok called Michaela and every makeup artist or every person who wears makeup I don't even wear makeup but I follow her because her content is so good and I'm looking at the structure of what she how she markets she created a entire series to this Fenty experience and even recorded herself getting ready at the event showcasing the product at the Super Bowl watching the halftime show meeting other influencers who are probably big names right and that creates a collaboration with them when I tell you this is pure genius this is how you market like a billionaire but i don't think you need to be a billionaire in order to market in that way can you reach out to micro or nano influencers and ask them to either review a product that you have or create an affiliate program for them yes rihanna just takes this <laughs> and explodes it in a way that a billionaire would. And this is why I want to share the strategies of what she's doing because it's different. It's not something most people are doing in the business at her level. Amazon is not going out there to influencers and asking them for product reviews, but they do have these influencers who do Amazon finds. When you give an experience to someone and you allow them to share that experience with their community, and most of these influencers have millions of followers, that gets your name out there, your brand out there to those people who maybe not even like to watch the Super Bowl, right? People who are in makeup probably don't watch football. But when you gravitate to the people who are going to make you money, a lot of money, and get in front of them to watch then the halftime show, or then to watch your favorite influencers experience Fenty 
beauty guess what you're going to do you're going to remember rihanna's makeup line and when you go to sephora or mac or wherever she's going to be top of mind which is essential for marketing it's pure, just pure genius guys like i can't even describe it the ability to invite influencers within the industry that you serve to help market her product which is fenty beauty will continue to make rihanna billions of dollars and again you don't have to be a billionaire in order to do this but you do have to get in front of more people than who you're serving that is the goal that is the strategy and if we can incorporate that into your marketing plan oh my gosh just please please let me know please let me know if it works <laughs> <laughs> because I will put a lot of money on the table to let you know this will be a game changer for you. On that note, I need another sip of my coffee. <laughs> because, again, that was just pure genius. All right, so let's talk about the next strategy that she did. And this is not really a marketing strategy because you're not going to sit here and do this just to get your name out there. But it, 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 there is purpose behind the announcement. So if you were watching the halftime show, like everybody, I think everybody had the same experience where we looked at her outfit and, you know, we everybody knew she just had a baby, but she still got a little bump going on, right? <laughs> and I'm not one to comment on anybody's body, on anybody's like, you know, if they still look, some, some women still look pregnant even after they give birth. But this was clearly defined a very subtle announcement that she is now pregnant with her second child again you don't you don't have to become pregnant to create marketing your world however the reason why this was another genius marketing strategy was you want to make sure people remember and continue to talk about you after showing your product or service for example it's a big announcement beyonce did a similar performance she was i think she was at the grammys or an, an award show and she basically announced that she was pregnant with blue ivy well rihanna took that and i think a hundred times that experience because she would did it at a halftime for the super bowl in front of millions if not a billion people so not only are people going to discuss her performance, but now there's another twist to it. People are going to discuss now that she's pregnant. And when someone's pregnant, you're going to want to keep up with them about what are they doing? Who are they seeing? What is she buying? By the time you listen to this, I think she is in her second trimester. So she's pretty far along when it comes to her pregnancy. But to do it in such a subtle way where people are now going to talk about her pregnancy. So here's... Here's why this marketing strategy works. The people who don't watch football, the people who don't wear makeup or care about makeup, but do care about the artists, you know, the branding and what are the people doing? What is what is the new thing? The bloggers. Now this is reaching a different type of audience. Do you guys see how genius her marketing team is? This is unreal because one thing I've learned about marketing is that if you're top of mind, you are tip of tongue. Which means that if people are constantly talking about you, eventually your business will make more money. We can't even help as humans to discuss things that we truly care about. So she's hitting not only the football, not only the music, not only the makeup, but the blogs of her being pregnant. <laughs> genius i can't even describe the amount of awe that i am in when it comes down to that announcement being during that time and then if you watch the performance it was pretty impactful as well and we will get into that next so let's talk about her performance another strategy that ended up happening and brewing as she was performing or even after was that her performance had a silent battle going on some people really really loved her performance and felt the energy she was conveying and some people didn't whenever there's a controversy people are still discussing right this is why publicist says there's no bad publicity because regardless if people are talking about you that means you're still going to be front of mind now, most people, when they watch the Super Bowl during the halftime, they have expectations of the energy within the performance and the artist that performs during halftime. Due to Rihanna being pregnant, 
she didn't perform with such a high intensity. So normally a performance at that level, the energy, like you can feel it through a screen and let alone being there. So she cultivated an energy that was very different. And again, like I said, some people liked it and some people didn't. So the people who loved it loved how much of a boss she was and how she didn't need to do too much in order to create an impact. Like she was very subtle. She did a few of the moves that the dancers were moving, but the dancers were outperforming her in the background. And there was influx of them in white versus her. Now I say all this is just because let alone, not only was she subtle with the way she was performing and everybody who's a mom knows like how dangerous it could be on a floating stage. She just didn't care. She didn't care about how people portray her because everybody has an opinion of moms to be right what you should and shouldn't be doing you shouldn't be out there you shouldn't be performing and things like this don't shouldn't happen when moms become pregnant she went against the grain with that now how does that serve the opposite side of the the battle some people didn't like it <laughs> i don't know how else to say this <laughs> i loved it and that's just my opinion but i like to hear both sides because some people on the internet were going against of like it wasn't the expectation of energy that is expected during a halftime show at the super bowl so normally that energy is just like one of the best performances in such a short amount of time usually you do dress changes you have special guests that come out of nowhere and it's just a great experience for the people there so when they didn't feel that which again it was a little mellow on the inside of rihanna they didn't really like it it wasn't the energy that was expected however <laughs> just like people talk about android and apple right or samsung i'm sorry um or PlayStation and Xbox, if you're talking about a brand, it's still powerful. It's still a powerful marketing tactic. So as a business owner, bringing a little controversy to your branding or your marketing even might be more impactful because now you get people to discuss your business. My husband actually runs a tech repair mobile shop. And I told him years ago, I'm like, you should do like a battle between what game systems are better is it playstation or xbox and he did and he had such engagement when it came down to his business these are the things that we have to take away when it comes down to marketing strategies and look at how billionaires do it because you can simplify it and create it for your own business as well now if all of that marketing wasn't enough rihanna then has her own guest appearance which is her fenty makeup <laughs> Now, if you saw the performance, you saw her performing, doing her own little thing. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the performance, somebody hands her like a makeup compact. She opens it, puts a little powder on her face, and then gives it back. Let me tell you, that quick second, I guarantee the sales went up. <laughs> Just because of that exposure, her marketing team and her, they're geniuses. The most watched time in America, let alone, I think, a little bit of the world too. And then you put out a fancy beauty makeup. You don't think sales are going to go up? <laughs> Every single time an artist performs at the Super Bowl, their sales like 500 times what they were doing before, which is why the Super Bowl is such a big game changer for a lot of the performers. This is so genius. And this is just like what I said, out of all the marketing strategies that were brewing up behind the scenes and on social media, she puts it in your face, her makeup. She puts it right there and does her little makeup and then goes on to the performance. Jean, yes. If we couldn't just like put it, just put it straight in your face of what she was trying to promote, now you know. <laughs> and any makeup person or a person who wears makeup knows it was fancy. You didn't even have to see the logo. You knew she was promoting her own business. Remember, top of mind is tip of tongue. So if you get people to discuss your brand and or your business, your sales will go up because the most powerful strategy we have today is word of mouth. And a lot of people think it's online, it's through social media. No, it's word of mouth. People trust their friends and their family more than anybody else in this world. And it's the people that they trust. So if their friend is telling them Fenty Beauty is the best makeup there is, guess what they're going to do? 
They're like, you have to try it. The formula is just so phenomenal, blah, 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 blah. All right, I'm not a makeup guru, but so I don't know how the whole thing goes. But again, out of all the things she was doing, putting her in front of everybody else, she then shows you her makeup. <laughs> I mean, can we just give a trophy or an award to the best marketer there is? <laughs> <laughs> Another strange and marketing thing that ended up happening was Rihanna didn't accept a paycheck for doing the halftime show. Mind you, they don't have to go on tour. They don't have to spend a lot of time. It's a quick like 10 to 13 maybe minutes. But I honestly think she's a billionaire. Let's let's keep that real a thousand percent. A couple of million, that's chump change. However, I also think the exposure that Rihanna was going to get from the Super Bowl performance, from inviting all these influencers, for having her an event, for announcing her pregnancy, for not even taking money. It's just being out of the game and letting this be the first performance when she came back. She knows she's going to get paid through her own exposure when it came to the marketing plans they had in front of our faces, right? This is what we discussed, or even behind the scenes. Pure genius. That's how you market like a billionaire take what feels good i don't say incorporate everything but you can take what rihanna and her marketing team did and make it your own and i even gave you some examples to incorporate into your business so there really is no excuse just know that this entire marketing plan was a stroke of genius I don't know anybody who utilized the Super Bowl in a way that Rihanna did. Her team came out, they knew who her audience was, and they captured and took advantage of the exposure to not only create more money for her business, but to be top of mind and tip of tongue with everybody that she does serve. Rihanna's Super Bowl performance was proof of how powerful word of mouth strategies are because when you are on everybody's mind, they will discuss you. They'll post, they'll create content, they will share their insights, they'll share you know everything about it. Like she's all over social media right now and she will continue to be that way. She's able to capture people who are more of like the bloggers and want to know the latest trends with the artist the performance in itself saying no to the money to knowing what she will gain in the end it's just a stroke of genius and when you're able to get in front of tons of people please know that the law of compensation states that you will make that money the amount of people you impact is the amount of money that comes into you so if you're not impacting a lot of people this is why creating content is so essential for business and for you to grow. I think it's the fastest way to get in front of people. Can you do that without it? Yes, absolutely. There's tons of other marketing strategies that you can do besides content marketing, but content marketing is the fastest. I think it's the fastest way to scale on a global scale as well. Thank you so much for listening and being in this space where we can come together as entrepreneurs and discuss content and marketing strategies over coffee. I love you so much and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.